Welcome to Across the Goal Line. I am Luke Godessart. This is a sports podcast brought to you by diehard fans. In today's video, I am going to be recapping week four of the 2017 college football season and then previewing week five as we got another great slate of games this upcoming weekend starting on Thursday night with Texas and Iowa State. Friday night, we got a Pac-12 showdown, top 25 showdown in the Pac-12 between USC and Washington State. And then on Saturday, Clemson visits Virginia Tech. College game day will be in Blacksburg for the first time in a while. Uh, But before I get started, uh, be sure to like Across the Goal Line on Facebook. Follow at ATGL on both Twitter and Instagram. Subscribe to YouTube if you haven't already. Uh, and then e- you can email uh, across the goal line 2016 at gmail.com if you have any questions or concerns. Uh, merchandise is available. You can also follow me on um, Twitter and Instagram. Uh, Colehand Luke 96 is my Twitter, and then Instagram is lgodisart96. That's L G O D I S S A R T 96 for Instagram. Uh, and you can, you know, tweet at me, message me. However you uh, feel comfortable in getting a hold of me uh, uh, for to let, it, to let me know um, if you would like to place an order for merchandise, um, you know, going back to that. Um, so as I said, uh, I'm going to uh, review uh, a week four of the college football season and then preview week five. Uh, but uh, before I do get started, uh, I want to clear the air on, uh, on something uh, a lot of people have been asking me where Corey has been at. Uh, well, if you watched a video on our, on Across the Goal Line's YouTube uh, page back in, let's say, I think, I believe it was May, uh, it was the, it was titled Big Announcement or Announcement, I can't even remember. Um, it's been a while and I've, you know, there's been a lot of stuff happening um, since then. And I'll get to, you know, another thing uh, here uh, after I get done talking about this uh, or explaining this. Um, But me and Corey, we had decided, you know, we were going to split up the topics. And then, um, uh, you know, I was going to do one thing and he was going to do another. And then, you know, we did that for a little bit. But then, you know, after a while we did, um, you know, decide to, you know, part ways and, uh, move on in uh, our own direction and I, I mean I wish Corey you know the best um, so I just I just wanted to uh, clear the air on that because I really haven't said a whole lot about it uh, and I know I've been getting a lot of um, comments and questions uh, regarding that so um, as I said I wish Corey the best um, in all his future endeavors um, so uh as I said, there's one more thing I wanted to wanted to talk about. Uh, as of today, um, September 27th, 2017, I um, in the next you know few weeks um, I will be joining a new uh, new um, blog vlog. Um, it's a it's a new it's still it's still in the works um it's a it's a new new uh sports i don't know how i want to describe this and uh shout out to john clark too by the way and sorry if i'm um uh, messing this all up for you because he was the one who um who uh created this and um well i'll just get into it uh sports active It's a new community dedicated to sports fans being able to voice their opinion whenever they want. Our forums are always open for discussions from controversial topics to personal sporting stories. We also have dedicated blog writers that bring you factual news and opinionated blogs. Join us on Facebook at Sports Active News and visit us at www.sportsactivenews.com. You can email us at sportsactivenews at gmail.com. Dot com with any questions, comments, or concerns. So, as of today, I will be joining uh, Sports Active in the next couple weeks, but I will also still be doing uh, Across the Goal Line uh, at the same time. Uh, and as I said, you know, going back to, you know, wishing Corey, you know, all the best 
um, I will be doing across the goal line if you haven't noticed already by myself from here on out uh, so it's a one man show uh, Luke Godessart as I said that's my name um, basically it's just going to be football and wrestling I will have um, I will be talking about discussing if I feel like it um, you know some other uh, major topics that's going on in the sports world uh, today we'll have to see uh, we did have uh, some more controversy with the national anthem protest this past weekend after Donald Trump made some remarks. And then uh, as of today, September 27th, um, well, as of yesterday, the 26th, um, uh, there was breaking news about um, college basketball and uh, a fraud corruption scandal uh, that the FBI has been looking into for quite some time, and they just came out with details yesterday. And then the, probably the first biggest blow uh, to all of this is that Louisville decided to fire Rick Pitino. So Rick Pitino is no longer the head basketball coach at Louisville, effective immediately. Um, so those were, um, you know, those were two big big stories that that broke this past uh, week in the sports world and if you've liked the cross the goal line on social media um, you can um, you've seen obviously seen you know the question of the day and the week question of the week for this whole week um, is what are your thoughts and do you uh, agree or disagree with the uh, national anthem protests that really have been going on since last August, but really came back into play after Donald Trump said some things last Friday night at a rally in Huntsville, Alabama. So that's the question of the week. Do you agree or disagree with the um, with the national anthem protest? And then the question of the day today, September 27th, was um, what are your thoughts on the recent news breaking news uh of the college basketball fraud corruption scandal uh are you surprised by it are you not surprised you know what are your thoughts on it um let me know um on our social media pages you can let me know also in the comments below of this video uh links to uh all those social media pages are in the description below uh so be sure to click on those if you haven't already Go like Cross School Line on Facebook, follow on uh, Twitter and Instagram, and then subscribe to the YouTube channel. That's obviously how you're listening to us, um, listening to me uh, bullshit uh, at the moment. So, and then like I said, any questions, questions or concerns, excuse me, uh, and you wish to keep them private, you can email Across the Goal Line 2016 at gmail.com. All right, let's get in. Let get into the. Uh, Let's get into now, uh, go over what happened uh, last weekend in college football and then preview week five. Uh, I went seven to nine this past week, uh, a little, little down, but I came up, came up strong in the end um, with, with some big wins, uh, especially you know, with Penn State uh, going on the road and defeating Iowa uh, on the last play of the game, so that, that gave me a win. Um, who else won? Washington, uh, they they were uh, in a close one against Colorado on the road, uh, but then pulled it out, uh, 37 to 10, if I'm not mistaken. Let me look at my notes. Yeah, the final score was 37 to 10, Washington over Colorado. Uh, so now I'll just run through the other games, I guess. Uh, South Florida defeated Temple last Thursday night. Uh, both these teams played the Friday before, so that's why I was about ready to say Friday. But these two teams played last Thursday night. It would have been September the 21st uh, by a score of 43-7. to uh, South Florida is looking really, really strong right now. And with uh, new uh, head coach, first-year head coach at South Florida, Charlie Strong, we all saw what he did with Louisville and Teddy Bridgewater. And then, you know, that led him to – him getting the job in Austin with Texas, but then we all saw what happened in his three years with the Longhorns. He obviously got fired after the end of last year and then uh, landed the job uh, in Tampa with the Bulls. Uh, and then Virginia defeated Boise State, surprisingly. 
I thought this was a upset, uh, one of the biggest upsets uh, of last week. The Cavs went to uh, Boise and defeated the Broncos 42-23. to Utah uh, also played Arizona on last Friday night. Then they won by a score of 30-24. to First game then on Saturday was Texas A&M and Arkansas. I did say last week in the video this game was being played in Fayetteville. And I believe I said it last year when these two teams played as well um, that this game was being uh, played in College Station. But these two teams, they always play in Arlington, Texas at Jerry World where the Dallas Cowboys play at. These two teams have played there for the past, I don't know how many years, probably since the stadium opened. Uh, and that'd be 2010, 9, 10, if I'm not mistaken on that as well. So, uh, But this game was played in Arlington, not Fayetteville, like I said last week. So um, I just wanted to get that get that out there. So I didn't uh, have that have that on my chest, you know, for another week or two. Um, and then, you know, after after week one, uh, after Texas A&M lost week one to UCLA on the road after blowing a 34-point uh, lead and losing 45-44, to 44, uh, the hot seat was, Kevin Sutherland was, was, you know, probably near close to being fired, if you ask me. But now, they haven't lost since that game, that was week one, but now... Brett Bielema, the head coach for Arkansas, uh, after he's in his fourth or fifth year in Fayetteville with the Hogs, um, after coming over from Wisconsin, I still don't know why he left Wisconsin. He had everything going for him up there in Madison. And then he goes to Arkansas, one of the worst teams in the SEC at the time. He's tried to turn him around. You know, he he's, he's got to bowl games, but... Arkansas is still in the middle of the pack of the SEC because they play in the SEC West, one of the hardest, if not the hardest, division in all of college football, other than the Big Ten East. Um, but I think I think Bielema is really, really on the hot seat now after uh, losing to A&M again. He has never uh, defeated Kevin Sumlin uh, in this matchup as Texas A&M defeated Arkansas 50-43 to in overtime. Texas Tech then defeated Houston 27-24. NC State defeated Florida State 27-21. Florida State is now 0-2 for the first time since 1989. Central Florida went on the road to College Park, defeated Maryland 38-10. Alabama went on the road to Nashville and blew out Vanderbilt 59-0. TCU also went on the road to Oklahoma State, defeated the Cowboys 44-31. USC also went on the road. We had a couple uh, couple games there. Um, past, wow, hell, all of them except for the A&M Arkansas game on Saturday so far. The team who has went on the road has won. And that's going to, you know, go up here, I believe. Hell, one, two, let me count these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13 of the 16 games I picked this past weekend, the away team won. USC defeated Cal 30-20. to Sam Darnold had another fantastic game. Michigan uh, hang, hung on and uh, defeated Purdue 28-10. Purdue, I thought they were going to upset them. Came close. Michigan pulled away late in the second half. Uh, they won 28-10. Georgia routed Mississippi State 31-3. to As I said, Penn State went on the road to Iowa City, defeated the Hawkeyes on the last play of the game, 21-19. We are Penn State. Notre Dame went on the road to East Lansing, defeated Michigan State by 20-38-18. Washington defeated Colorado, as I said earlier, 37-10. And then Stanford defeated UCLA in a shootout, 58-34. As I said, the biggest upset I thought, one of the biggest upsets I thought, was Virginia and Boise State. Uh, another one was NC State over Florida State. Um, you know, Florida State's 0-2 now for the first time since 89. You know, they lost Francois in their opening game against Alabama. They haven't played since week one up until, you know, this past weekend. Uh, due to Hurricane Irma, they had a game postponed and another one canceled 
both of them might might have been canceled if if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but then Arizona State also defeated Oregon, which probably was the biggest upset of the week, um, as the Oregon Ducks were ranked in the top 25. That is no longer the case. They lost uh, by a score of 37 to 35. Um, so they lost by two. Uh, and the Sun Devils, Todd Graham, God rest his soul. You know, the damn the damn guy. He he coached at Tulsa there for a little bit. Went to Pitt. Was at Pitt for a year, and then went to Arizona State. He's been there since. Um, I shouldn't have said God rest his soul because he's not dead. But um, he he tried to turn that program around. They were good back in 2014. Ever since then, you know they've they've been down in the dumps, if you ask me, in the bottom of the Pac-12. But now, after picking up a win over the Oregon Ducks, a team that has also been down, especially last year, finishing four and eight, um, after you know the Chip Kelly uh, era had gotten over, and then Mark Helfrick had taken over, and you know they they were good, and then last year they just had a bad year, and Helfrick got gets fired. Uh, they bring in what's his name from South Florida. That's how Charlie Strong got the South Florida job. Um, Nate Kurtz, I'm sorry, don't know the head coach, head, your head coach's name for your Oregon Ducks, um, but um, it's a big win, big win uh, for Arizona State over Oregon. Best game then I thought was Penn State and Iowa. As I said, Penn State won on the last play of the game uh, and won by a score of 21 to 19. Saquon Barkley had 358 all-purpose yards, most in Penn State football history. If he's not a uh, Heisman candidate at the end of the year, there's something wrong. Um, Team that impressed, disappointed. Uh, I have three that impressed and then one that disappointed. Impressed Alabama, you know. Vandy, yeah, they were 3-0, but Alabama had to go on the road. Um, and they they blew them out, and they shut them out, 59 to nothing. Central Florida, all these teams went on the road, actually. Like I said, 13 of the 16 games I picked, um, uh, the uh, road team won. So uh, Central Florida defeated Maryland 38 to 10. They've only played two games as well, going back to Florida State, and I'll get Florida State in here right now, I guess, uh, because they were my disappointing uh, team of the week this past week, losing to NC State at home. I know that it's only the second game of the year, but – Central Florida, their team that, you know, only played their second game of the year as well, and they go on the road uh, to Maryland, who is a team that went on the road week one and defeated Texas. Uh, so Central Florida, you know, they, they impressed me. Uh, they, they are now 2-0, um, averaging about 48 points a game. Uh, and then Virginia as well, going on the road and defeating Boise State pretty handily. Um, so, you know, with that, I'll just get into the games for this upcoming weekend. As I said, Texas and Iowa State is on Thursday night. Miami Duke is also on Thursday night. I really, really like that matchup. Miami Florida is another one of those teams that's only played, uh, one game, I believe, two games. Um, I don't even know if they played week one, to be honest with you. I know they, uh, defeated Toledo this past weekend at home, but... They go on the road to uh, uh, to Duke. Uh, so Texas, Iowa State, you know, Texas, they lost to Maryland week one, almost defeated USC uh, on the road, lost in double overtime a couple weeks ago. I think they go on the road to Ames, Iowa, and defeat the Cyclones. And then Miami, Florida, I think they also go on the road and defeat, defeat Duke, who defeated North Carolina. Uh, last week for the third time in the past four years, if I read that right. Um, and then Friday night we got we got a couple games. Um, I'm only going to be uh, picking one uh, for this weekend, um, for this week's picks, I should say. USC and Washington State, top 25 showdown. It's, on, it's at 10.30 on ESPN. Um, college game day, I thought... You know, last week they were in New York City at Times Square. Uh, the week before they were in Louisville. And surprisingly, I was just thinking about that today, they were in Louisville 
Rick Pitino was the special guest picker. Well, now he's no longer the head basketball coach at Louisville, like I said earlier in this in this video, you know, due to that uh, fraud corruption scandal that's um, going through the whole sport of college basketball as we speak. But um, I thought college game day, they should be in Pullman uh, for this matchup. But then uh, they they knew what they were you know, doing good New York City, and then I knew they were going to be going to Blacksburg if if both Clemson and Virginia Tech won. They both did. That's where they'll be at this weekend, like I said, because there is a good game this past weekend in in college football out west. I think it was probably the probably the uh, Washington Colorado game in a rematch of the Pac-12 championship game from last year. Um, but, uh, you know, they decided to go to New York City instead because, you know, then that USC-Washington State game was on a Friday night. Now, if it was on a Saturday, college game day, they should have been in Pullman for the first time ever. But, you know, they're not. They're in Blacksburg this weekend. So, go Hokies as well. I'll get into that uh, into that matchup here in a second. Might have gave, my, gave away my answer there, but oh well. Or my pick. But oh well. Um, so, USC-Washington State. I'm going to take Washington State in the upset. Friday night. You know, we saw this last year. Stanford went on the road to Washington, um, and they got blown out. And then Washington went on a run uh, and then lost in the semifinal game in the playoff. But um, I think I think this game is very going to be very similar to that. I think USC, they'll score some points, but I think Washington State will, will uh, be victorious in the end. Vanderbilt then goes to Florida. Vanderbilt they started three and zero. They're now three and one after losing to Alabama. Um, you know, Florida changing quarterbacks. Felipe Franks uh, got benched in favor of uh, Del Rio, Jack Del Rio's kid. Luke Del Rio is his name. Um, he's he's been all around college football. He started at Oklahoma State. I think he went somewhere else, and then he's he ended up at Florida, but. Um, I'm going to take Florida because they're playing in the swamp. Vanderbilt, if this game was in Nashville, you know they might might have um, might have the edge, but I think Florida will uh, also be victorious in this one just because they're playing at home. Maryland goes to uh, Minneapolis to play Minnesota. Another another decent game this weekend, I think. Um, especially probably for the uh, Big Ten race come late in the year, especially with both these teams surprisingly being atop in their respective divisions. Um, you know, Maryland, they lost to, you know, Central Florida last week at home. That's the same thing with Vanderbilt. They lost to Alabama, and both these teams, they got to go on the road this week then. And I think they're both going to lose. I'm going to take Minnesota in this one. You know, P.J. Fleck, he's doing one hell of a job. Um, in in uh, the land of 10,000 lakes uh, so far this season, you know, with wins uh, over Buffalo, Oregon State, and uh, who else did they play? They played some other um, shitty-ass team, but they still picked up the win, so that's all that matters. Um, so, taking Florida over Vandy and Minnesota over Maryland because both Vandy and Maryland lost last week, and I... You know they'll show up to play, but I don't think they're going to play too, play too good. I don't think they'll have a bounce back week. Um, Wisconsin then they were off last week after uh, going to BYU the previous week. They host Northwestern at 12 o'clock on ABC. I'm going to take the Badgers uh, in that one, and then Indiana goes to Penn State. Penn State, the uh, generation generations of greatness game. Um, Penn State will be wearing retro throwback jerseys for the first time ever. End zones are being painted um, like they were back in the day. Hopefully there's a lot of people on hand like there normally is, 100, 107, 110,000. Um, and I think Penn State, uh, with the help of all those fans, will pick up the win over Indiana. Uh, I believe it all is also homecoming weekend over in Happy Valley. Uh, Georgia then goes to Tennessee. This game last year, Tennessee won on a uh, Hail Mary at the end of the game, on the last play of the game. 
So Georgia, they've had that uh, play in their mind uh, since that game last year. They got to go on the road though this year, but I think um, you know I think Georgia's offense uh, will uh, prevail uh, over Tennessee's. Uh, defense, Bob Shoup's defense, and, you know, Tennessee, they might be cleaning house at the end of the year um, if they um, if they don't start winning some games here soon. Florida State, then, they go to Wake Forest. I think they'll have a bounce-back week, pick up their first win of the year, so I'm going to take Florida State over Wake Forest. Iowa, then, goes to East Lansing to play Michigan State. Iowa, I think they'll have a bounce-back week as well. They... Um, you know, as I said, they lost to Penn State on the last play of the game last week. And they had the Nittany Lions right where they wanted them. But, you know, Penn State's, uh, Penn State's offense was just uh, too much um, for the Hawkeyes. So I'm going to take Iowa over Michigan State. Mississippi State then goes to Auburn. Uh, Mississippi State, I think, will win. Memphis then goes to Central Florida. I believe this game was supposed to be played a couple weeks ago, uh, but was postponed I believe it was canceled, but somehow it's on the schedule now. Um, I could be wrong about all that, though, too. Um, but Memphis and Central Florida, they're playing, regardless of you know if the game was supposed to be played a couple weeks ago or not. Central Florida, I think, will win. As I said, I believe they're averaging about 48 points a game. And um, I, think, uh, I think this game will be a shootout because Memphis, we've seen uh, so far this year as well that they can also score some points. Oklahoma State then goes to Texas Tech. I think they'll bounce back after losing to TCU at home. Uh, and then Clemson and Virginia Tech, as I said, college game day will be there this weekend in Blacksburg for the first time and seems like forever. I think the Hokies will upset Clemson. I think this will could be another weekend of upsets in college football. I thought last weekend was going to be we, I believe, had a couple, but nothing really – really big I think this weekend to end September to move into October um, I think we'll have some big upsets so I'm going to take Virginia Tech over Clemson and then Ole Miss and Alabama I got to take Bama Ole Miss they're not the same this year after getting rid of Hugh Freeze uh, over the summer and then uh, Cal and Oregon I think Oregon will bounce back um, after losing to Arizona State on the road last week by a score of 37 to 35. Um, so with that, that's all I have for um, for today's uh, video. For this video, I should say, uh, I'm going to be recording another video here very, very shortly. Uh, so be sure to go check that out as well. Once it's up on YouTube, uh, it is going to be uh, NFL week week four. It's hard to believe we're already in the fourth week of the NFL season. Hell, we're in the fifth week of the college football season. So, uh, hell, Halloween's going to be next month, and Thanksgiving's after that, and um, uh, Christmas is you know going to be right at, right around the corner after that. So, um, hopefully, the uh, uh, quality of this video um, and the sound was uh, or is ten times better than what it what it normally is um, or has been the past past month, month and a half. Um, so hopefully you guys um, enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, be sure to go, uh, go uh, click that thumbs up button down below. Uh, also share this video uh, with, uh, with family and friends on social media, whether it be Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, I don't even know what other social media pages are out there nowadays. It's hard to tell. Um, and then uh, go vote on the question of the week. As I said uh, at the beginning of this video, the question of the week this week is, do you agree or disagree with um, with the national anthem protests that are still going on? And then the question of the day today, um, and it will be up until tomorrow, um, is what are your thoughts on the recent breaking news of the uh, college basketball fraud corruption scandal that uh, recently just broke and then with Rick Pitino getting fired by Louisville. So uh, let me know what you guys think about all that. Let me know what you guys think about this video as well. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. I could really care less. 
Um, and then, like I said, if you have any questions or concerns, you can email across the goal line 2016 at gmail.com. Or, you know, if you want to comment down below in the comment section below. So you can do that as well. Um, with that, uh, I will see everybody um, uh, sometime soon. Uh, you can also go listen to, as I said, go listen to that uh, uh, NFL Week 4 predictions. And uh, I'll see everybody later.